Ukraine's Deputy Defense Minister, Lieutenant General Ivan Havriliuk, has stated that the targets of ATACMS ballistic missiles include not only Russian military airfields. In an article for Interfax Ukraine, he noted that while discussions were underway with partners about lifting restrictions on the use of long-range weapons, the Russians moved their aircraft further inland beyond the range of ATACMS. This has led some in the West to doubt the effectiveness of their use. Havriliuk stressed that ATACMS can strike not only Russian military airfields, but also arsenals, bases and warehouses. Thus, the Russians would supply less weapons, ammunition and equipment to the front lines in Ukraine. Even the biggest and fiercest bears are afraid of fire. The rabid Russian bear will be stopped by the powerful fire of the defense forces of Ukraine. We need to add firepower. Many of our partners are aware that the scale of the Russian offensive requires a greater supply of weapons to the Ukrainians. At the same time, we urge our partners to urgently help speed up the development and increase the volume of production of missiles, long-range drones, robotic complexes, EW systems and other weapons at Ukrainian enterprises. And we also offer allies to buy weapons for the armed forces from Ukrainian manufacturers. A better armed Ukrainian army will quickly motivate Russia until the end of the war, he said. The answer to the question millions of Ukrainians ask, when will the war end? Is simple. It will end when Russia can no longer continue it. This depends primarily on the Ukrainian soldiers and strong decisions from our allies. Ukraine has the right to defend itself, but we do not have enough weapons to repel the Kremlin's troops. Therefore, we are forced to remain on the defensive. That is why we emphasize the need for more resources, not just for defense, the Deputy Defense Minister emphasized. Havriliuk also noted that Kyiv is encouraging its allies to purchase weapons from armed forces of Ukraine from Ukrainian manufacturers. At the same time, we are urgently asking our partners to help speed up the development and increase the production of missiles, long-range drones, robotic systems, electronic warfare systems and other weapons at Ukrainian enterprises, he added. The Defense Forces fighters managed to stop the occupiers from advancing in the direction of the city of Selidovo, but the assaults themselves have not stopped. This was stated in a commentary to LigaNet by Vitaly Milovidov, an officer of the National Guard Operational Brigade, Karadag. According to him, more than a week has passed since the Karadag fighters stopped the Russian advance in the Selidovsky area. The Russians have become more cautious and are no longer moving so openly since Ukrainian artillery and FPV drones are successfully operating here. Now the National Guard is trying to keep the invaders away from the infantry lines, reducing the number of close combats. However, the Russians are still storming almost to the last. To say that they got hit in the teeth somewhere and rolled back, they have no such practice at all. There is an anti-tank ditch near the Kotlyarevskaya mine in the vicinity of Selidovo. It is already filled with corpses and they are climbing through them and simply walking one after another. A terrible picture, the officer said. Also indicative is the lack of military equipment among the Russians in this direction. Its use is recorded in isolated cases, but the Russian Federation is beginning to use more guided air bombs and does not neglect to strike with high precision weapons at Ukrainian positions that they physically cannot pass through. According to the officer, in recent days the Russians have become more cautious and are less likely to form large groups for assaults. Melovidov does not believe that the enemy has run out of soldiers. The occupiers have simply taken a break to find more effective tactics. Recently, Russia deployed significant reserves of motorized infantry, amounting to up to a battalion, as well as up to two batteries of 155mm cannon and 122mm rocket artillery, including M777A2 and FH70 howitzers, as well as the RM70 Vampire MLRS in the Selidovo direction. After being supported by artillery fire and FPV drones, several tactical assault platoon units of the armed forces of Ukraine carried out a counter-offensive launch from the fortifications in the southern quarter of Selidovo towards the eastern part of the city, forcing units of the center group of troops to retreat to the northeastern outskirts of Selidovo in the area of fire station number 63. Apparently, regrouping and preparations for a new offensive of Russian army units in the central regions of Selidovo are now underway.